What's going on? Oh god, I don't have the energy today. <laughs> Want me to do it for you? Yeah. What's going on? And welcome back to Chud's BBQ. We're here today in Lebanon, New Hampshire, and Brad doesn't want to do the intro, so I'm doing it. And today, we're making some chili. And guess what, Evan? It has beans. Beautiful, thick, meaty, bean in chili. That's right, folks. I had to travel across the country to get away from Texas just to make this video. <laughs> Coming up! This is some meat. Pat it dry. Just your average big old Chuck Rose picked this up at the local price chopper. I used to work there. But of course, any cut of meat will do. Brisket, short ribs, you know the drill, folks. We're making chili. But I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a nice seasoning with some kosher salt. We're gonna obviously have to salt this again once it's in chili form, but uh, this will give us a good head start. And as always, folks, don't forget the sides. Come on, looking good to me. Let's throw it on the pit. Back out of the trusty old Weber kettle. That's my favorite part. And it would appear that I dropped the lid again. Just like Christmas day. Gotta throw some hickory chunks on there as well. Get a little extra smoke going. And on the pit we go. Now because this is going to be cooked down into a chili, I am not concerned at all about cooking this thing to any specific temperature. I just want to get some good flavor on it, starting out with a little bit of smoke, and then we'll probably sear it off to get some more of that charcoal flavor. But really, I am not concerned at all. We'll let that go for maybe 20, 30 minutes or so. Now we are in fact putting beans in our chili today, which is a topic of hot debate. But for me growing up in New England, there was always beans in the chili. But being a cook in Texas for the last 10 years, you will get screamed at by a chef at the mere suggestion of putting beans in the chili. Beans too, right? And zero beans in chili, I will die on that hill. If there's a single bean in the pot, it is then a pot of beans. I learned that one the hard way when I suggested putting beans in the chili one time. No fucking beans in the chili. But for me, I think there's room in this world for both types of chili, bean in and bean out, and they both serve very different purposes. In Texas, chili con carne is the state dish of Texas, also known as Texas red chili. I've made it a few times on this channel. I love it. It is bean free. It's made with actual chilies, very meat forward, and something that I consider as more of a topping or a condiment that you're gonna put on like a Frito pie or a chili cheeseburger or a chili dog or something like that. Whereas what we're making today is more of a stew. As Adam Ragusea says, it's bean simmered in spicy tomatoes. And it's something you're gonna eat out of a bowl with a spoon as opposed to putting on a hot dog. You know, I don't wanna be putting beans on a hot dog unless I'm trying to enter a fart contest or something like that. And on a nice, crisp, cold, nine degree day like today, something about a hearty bowl of chili just really hits the spot, warms you up nice and through. And although they have the same name, chili, they're completely different in my mind. And they're both very delicious. While that meat smokes away, let's go ahead and get our veg ready. After about 20, 30 minutes of some nice indirect smoke, now I'm just gonna go ahead and sear this bad boy right off. Yeah, it's like a giant steak. Now there are plenty of other variations where you can make a chili just like this with no meat, you can make it with chicken, it could be completely bean forward. And there's also versions of chili con carne where you can definitely have beans in there. Evan calls those chili beans, just not chili. So it's a confusing world. Looking good though. And what I like to refer to as New England style chili, which is what my mom makes on these cold winter days all the time, is really just grabbing stuff out of the pantry, you know? Typically just throw some ground beef into the pot, brown it down, add some chili powder, cumin, garlic, maybe saute some veg in there like we're doing today. A couple cans of whatever tomato product you have lying around. This is one of those no fuss mom meals. Feed a bunch of people, great for lunch, great for dinner. But you know me, I gotta add a little smoke to the party. So that's why I'm smoking and grilling this thing off before we grind it up. And that is looking pretty good to me. Again, we're just trying to get some color on there. Not worried about the internal temp at all. So off this thing comes. Beautiful. One of the big benefits of being in New Hampshire on a chilly day is uh, we don't need to pop this in the fridge or the freezer. I'm just gonna let it cool down right here next to this heady topper. And while that cools down, we're gonna go ahead and get our veg sauteed off. So in this big old pot here, I'm going in with some oil, our onion, our poblano, some jalapeno, and a big fat pinch of salt. And we're just gonna let these soften down for just a wee bit. And once those have just started taking on some color, we're gonna go in with a nice fat dollop of some tomato paste. And let that toast off for a minute, as well as our garlic. 
And typically when I'm making chili, I like to use actual chilies. Get those dried chilies, you can steam them or roast them off till they're soft and make a nice chili puree, a nice chili paste that way. But believe it or not, dried chilies are not something you're gonna find at your local grocery store here in New Hampshire. So we're going chili powder today. But I got a few different kinds. We got some ancho powder some standard chili powder, and some chipotle, as well as a whole bunch of some smoked paprika, red chili flakes, and some cumin. And then to up the beefiness a little bit, we got some of these demi-gloss cubes. They'll use for the Wellington video, which is basically just a concentrated beef stock. Smelling so good. And now our canned goods, including some diced tomatoes and some crushed tomatoes. Top it off with some water. And now amongst dogs barking, I'm gonna grind all this meat, which I accidentally hit a perfect medium rare on. But through the old stand mixer we go. And now simply enough, I'm just blasting this in a hot pan to get yet another layer of flavor. Your classic browned beef here. Deglaze that pan a little bit. Get up all those brown good bits. Now that all of our meat has been added to the pot, it's looking nice and thick. The whole house smells great, right mom? It smells terrific, Brad. And because we cooked this meat like 17 times, we don't really need to let this stew for all that long. And I must say, this is looking pretty good. But in order to make Evan twitch somewhere in Texas, now we're gonna add a big can of some pinto beans. Oh yeah. Also gonna go in with some kidney beans, cause that's what mom always did growing up. It's a classic. I did drain out some of that bean juice, not all of it. I didn't try too hard, but just a nice healthy shot off the top because this is already pretty thick and that starchy liquid can thicken this up even more. I don't think that's enough beans. What else we got over here? And in true chili fashion, she is literally just going through the cabinet and came up with this. Three bean blend, why not? Ooh, beany, meaty, chili -y. But now that this is to the consistency that I like, it's time to just do a final taste and adjust. I just took a taste and I think it needed a big fat pinch of salt, which I added. I'm also gonna throw just a splash of some vinegar in right at the end, just to brighten it up. A couple shots of warch just for good measure. Give this a final stir, taste it one more time, and our bean in chili is done. All right, folks, and then actually, a relatively short time for cooks on this channel. It is time to plate up. So into this classic little mug bowl. What do you call these? We call them the Davy Crockett Bowls. The Davy Crockett Bowl. It is fitting that we're putting chili into a Davy Crockett Bowl. And it's just based on the shape of his hat. Nice big dollop. Beans and all, folks. Topped with some beautiful sour cream, as is tradition. Got some lovely little tortilla strips for some added crunch on the side. A little bit of some shredded cheddar cheese. Definitely should have put the cheese down first. That was an oversight. Just for some color, some chives on top. And just like that, our bean in New England style chili is done. Let's dive in. <laughs> the mitts are so good. Oh, you got the mini mitts going. <laughs> Becca, how is the chili? It was good. It was not too spicy, but very flavorful. And I liked the crunch of the tortilla strips. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the texture. It wasn't that smoky, but there was just a hint and it had a nice chew. Brooke, how does it compare to my normal chili? Could have been spicier, <laughs> but I know that we're not. We're in the north now, so. <laughs> uh, but it was delicious. I loved it. I liked it too. Bradley! <laughs> Bradley! Oh, Jesus! Any thoughts? I loved it. You were saying when you were making it, you were afraid it was going to be too spicy, but I didn't find it too spicy. It has a little memory, but uh, it's very pleasant, and I must say, I do like the texture of the beans in chili. Sorry, Evan. <laughs> it's true. You're going to relive that memory tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> All alone in the moonlight. <laughs> All right, John, that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic bean in chili. As I've said throughout this video, I don't think that they are the same thing. I don't think they can be used in the same ways, but they each have a right to be in this world and stand up great on their own. And if you're a bean and chili hater, I highly recommend giving this recipe a try. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time, I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.